So this is our last section for chapter three. And then so next week we'll be working on chapter four and then that's the end of the trigonometry unit. So this section, we're just gonna go over what we've learned about solving acute, acute triangles. And remember that acute triangles have three angles less than 90 degrees, okay? So all the angles in an acute triangle are less than 90 degrees. So we can use what we've learned to solve different problems, and we can do it in a variety of ways. We can use our sine law, cosine law, or our primary trig ratios, and this would be so Katoa. So Katoa. Okay, so basically we have to look at what information do we have is it? And mostly for this one, that means we, if we have a right triangle, we can use our primary trig ratios. And then we just decide which law can, we can use. So we're going to use sine law if we have side, side, angle. So something that looks like this. Oh. Side, side, angle. Okay, and then one of the angles has to be opposite one of the sides you know. So I drew in this one, and we are opposite this side. You could have also used this one, because it's opposite the, that side. Or do we have angle, side, angle? Do we have two angles and a side? And remember that this one is a little bit more flexible, because anytime you have two angles in a triangle, you can easily find out the third. Uh, if you have a triangle and you're given all three sides, which we call side, 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 use cosine law, okay? Remember cosine law is the one that would look like a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So if you have all three sides, you use cosine law. And then if you have side, angle, side, and this one is not flexible, you need a contained angle. So you need the angle between two sides. Okay, so if you redraw this, if you had this angle, you need this side and this side. Okay? So you look at your triangle, you look at the information you have, you decide which law to use. So here, if we look at these triangles, we have triangle L, J, K, and triangle X, Y, Z. Okay, so if you're given here, uh, this is 5.8 centimeters, and this is 73 degrees, and over here you have 6.6 .6 centimeters. So if I look here, I have two sides, I have one angle, two sides and one angle, so uh, you could write this as side, side, angle. And then you look at your angle. Does it have a, si a known side across from it? If I look opposite my angle, it does have a known side. So uh, one angle and opposite side length are known. And therefore, we'll use what kind of law? Pause the video, think about it for a second. We're going to use sine law. And if we're looking for this angle up here, which is angle L, uh, we can use um, sine J over J, because those are the two we know, equals sine L over L. Or you can also use L or sorry, j over sine j equals l over sine l, either way. Now if I look over here, uh, and I say that you have this is 0 0.9 centimeters, this is 1.1 centimeters, and this is 1.2 centimeters, and I'm asking you, what is angle y? I look what I have. I have side, side, side. Side, 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 I know from just reviewing that we will use, again, pause it for a second, think about it. Hopefully you said cosine law. 
Okay, be able to identify which one you're going to use. Your quiz on Tuesday will mostly be uh, just involving things like that. Do I use sine law? Do I use cosine law? And then implementing it. And then for this one, we'll call this NOP. We have 16.9 centimeters, 13.3 centimeters. Uh, we have 87 degrees in here. And I'm asking you for angle O. So I look what I have. I have um, side side angle. And one of my known sides is opposite from my known angle. And so this is just one second, it's freezing. So now this triangle is a very interesting case because we do have um, an angle opposite one side, but can we solve for this? So let's look at different possibilities. So we're looking for angle O. So sine O over O equals sine P over P because we know sine P, right? So we know this and we know this, but we don't know either of these. So can we use sine law? Can't use sine law. So then let's try uh, cosine law. We're looking for angle O, so we'll go O squared equals N squared plus P squared minus 2NP cos O. And we're looking, again, we want to know this. And we know N squared, and we know uh, P, P squared, so we know those. Uh, but we don't know this one, and we don't know this one, so we can't use cosine law either. So what we would have to do in this one, if you remember back from that chain and car example, we would have to split this up into two right angle triangles, use our primary trig ratios to find the height, and then use that to find one of the sides. So be aware that this is a possibility that when you're given a triangle, right off the bat you might not be able to use cosine or sine law. You might be able to, and most of the time you can, but there are exceptions, so just be careful not to get really, really frustrated. If you write out the different scenarios, like we did here, and if there is no possibility, then it just doesn't work. You can't use either, and that's fine. You just have to move into your trig ratios. So let's look at this example. A roof is constructed with two rafters of slightly different lengths forming an acute triangle. The width of the roof is 42 feet. The first rafter makes a degree of 48 degrees with the horizontal and the second rafter makes an angle of 44 degrees with the horizontal. Sketch a diagram. Okay, so we're just going to draw a roof. So this would be your, um, and we'll, we'll just label this triangle ABC. So A would be a rafter. and B would be a rafter. We'll say our width, this part here, is 42 feet, and that's side B. And then we know that this is, oh, and sorry, this would be side C, not side B. This will be 48 degrees, okay, because we're told here. And then we'll make this one 44 degrees, because we're told there. Okay, so we have two angles and a side. And right now, what can we figure out just looking at this without doing anything completely complicated? If I have two angles, I have angle A and angle C, so I can find angle B. And angle B just equals 180 minus 44 minus 48, so that will be 88 degrees. Okay, so now we want to find the length of each rafter. So we want to know A and uh, C. A and C. What are lengths A and C? So if we look for A, just because it comes first, if we're looking for A, we have 
three angles and a side. So when we look at the two, I mean, if you go back to your notes on 3.3, um, uh, we look at this, we're going to use sine law. Okay, so we're going to solve for A with sine law. So we're going to go A sine 48, because that is, here, you know what, actually we'll do, I'll write out the formula first, A sine A, and then because we have length B, we're going to use B side B, sine B. To get A by itself, we're going to have, so B is 42, because we know that length, we're going to multiply both sides by sine A, and then we'll have sine 48 over sine 88. And we'll get that A equals 31.2 feet. Okay, then we want to solve for C. And again, we can use sine law, and again, we can just use our given to be as accurate as possible. So we'll have C sine C equals B sine B. We multiply both sides by sine C, and those will cancel out. So we get C equals, again, side B was 42 times sine 44 divided by sine 88. Again, be very careful with your brackets here, and we'll get C equals 29.2 feet. A and C are different, which is good because we were told that the two rafters were slightly different lengths. And if we look at our answer, 31.2 and 29.2, that's not very much different, so that's good. And then we want to know what the height of the roof is. So if I draw my roof again, the height, so what is height H? Okay, so what does the height make? The height makes a right angle triangle. So we're going to use this one. You can use the other one, of course. Um, and by the other one, I mean you could use this one if you wanted. So we're looking for H. We just solved this, so I know that A is 31.2 degrees. That's 90 degrees. And then this angle here is 44 degrees. So if I'm standing in this angle, I'm looking for my opposite and I have my hypotenuse. So which trig ratio from SOHCAHTOA involves opposite and hypotenuse? Sine does. So I'm going to do sine 44 equals h over 31.2. h here being height, not hypotenuse. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 31.2. So I'm going to get a value of, I just have to grab my calculator, sorry about that. So I'll get a value of 21.673 for height, and then I'll just bring it down to one decimal, so 21.7 feet for height. Okay, and this is a perfect example of using our cosine law, our sine law, and our trig ratio, all that information, looking at it all, and then using each one. Okay, now let's look for, or let's do our last question here. Consider this question which is given on page 148 of your textbook, so you can go check it out in your textbook too. A tree is growing on a hillside as shown. The hillside is inclined at an angle of 15 degrees to the horizontal. The tree casts a shadow uphill. How tall is the tree to the nearest meter? So here's our horizontal that we drew in here. Okay, so 15 degrees. Now let's use our knowledge of parallel lines. You see here that there's parallel lines. So if I know that this is 15 degrees, I know that this right here is 15, 15 degrees. 
Okay, so this is where all your geometry comes into play when we're working with, with trigonometry. Okay, and then for this total angle here, right here, so the angle of the hill, which is this slanty angle, the angle of the sun coming down, this would be um, angle total is 57 plus 15, which equals 72 degrees. And again, these two lines here are parallel lines, and we know that because they have their little arrow to tell us that they are parallel. And so if we looked at this and we were asked to solve for as many unknown angles as possible, Which angles could we solve for? So we know that we have this here. These are our parallel lines. So we know that this is 15 degrees and this is 15 degrees. And the reason is that these are alter alternate interior angles are equal. Now be very careful. Work on these reasons and being able to use them properly. So the wording alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, using that wording is, is quite important in this case. And um, we can look at the triangles that we have. Okay, so if we look at the triangle here, so we have our height, we're told that this is seven meters in the diagram. We know that this is 72 degrees, and let's look up here. So this is the triangle I'm drawing, this triangle right here. Okay, so this we know is 72 degrees. This is our height. We're told our seven meters right there. And if we look at this uh, main triangle that I've drawn closer, we'll see that it has two right angle triangles in it. And this is um, seven meters. This is 57 degrees. And this is 15 degrees. And again, this is this tri these two triangles here. There's one here. And here's one here. Okay, and there's your two right angles. And so using that, we can find this angle here and this angle here, just by using our sum of angles. So if this is 90 degrees, this angle here is 180 minus 57 minus 90. And so this equals uh, 33 degrees. And this one here will equal 180 minus 15 minus 90. This is 75 degrees. So here we know that this is 33 degrees and this is uh, 75 degrees. And so all of a sudden, just by using the rules we know about geometry and triangles, from an, a diagram where it didn't look like we were given very much information, we now have a lot of information. And if you look down here, what we have are uh, three angles and one side, just like we had up before. So three angles on one side, and we're looking for side H. So to solve for height, I'm going to use sine law. So we'll have H over sine H equals, and since I have this, uh, we'll make this H here and then we'll just make this H, J, K. So here we'll have J over sine J. Okay, and I'm just gonna bring this up here to fill out. So we still don't know H. We're gonna multiply both sides by sine H. Okay, so then we'll have J, which is seven meters, times sine J, which is 33 degrees. Oh, sorry, sine h, 
which is 72 degrees, divided by sine j, which is sine 33. And we'll get that h equals 12.2 meters. So the tree is 12.2 meters high. Okay, so you can do these questions in the textbook. I would also recommend, after you've done the work, maybe leave it for a day or so, come back and look at this question in your textbook with fresh eyes and see if you can do it again. Again, it doesn't look like we have a lot of information, but just apply all that information you know already about triangles and geometry and trigonometry, and you'll be able to find out the information. Okay, so you have a quiz on Tuesday. It's going to be on sine and cosine law. It's very short. It's just three questions. It will be a solo quiz. Uh, you don't have any homework unless you haven't handed in worksheet 2.2. And by homework, I mean you don't have to hand anything in this time, but please work on the textbook questions. Also, uh, work, start working on the review if you want. I will have it printed out for you next class. So you can either go online and look at it because it's posted right now or you can wait till class. But just be aware that this unit is much shorter. So getting started on the review as soon as possible is in your best interest. So this is the last video. There are two videos this week. Uh, please email me or come see me before class next week if you have any problems and I'll see you on Tuesday.